session. To kick off the day, we are delighted to have Arthi Morali with M&T Bank. Arthi inspires people to imagine fresh possibilities for their customers. As M&T Bank's first Chief Customer Experience Officer, she builds teams to make those possibilities a reality so they can, in turn, create the best experience for the community bank's customers. Arthi is going to unpack how your teams can be advocates, storytellers, and organizational engineers to reimagine the customer experience. Welcome, Arthi. Over to you. Thank you, Brooke. Um, thank you to the Frost and Sullivan crew here for bringing in and hosting this exchange and bringing all of us virtually together in this uh, pandemic environment as well. Um, Brooke or anyone you want, you just want to give me a thumbs up that you can hear me okay? And I'll keep plowing along. Okay. Oh, lots of thumbs up. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, fantastic to be here. I am going to very quickly pull up my screen and we will get rolling. I just got a good tutorial two minutes ago. All right, and here we go. So again, thank you so much for hosting this conversation and thank you for having me join here today. Um, as Brooke shared, I'm with m and Bank. I am their first Chief Customer Experience Officer. And um, just to share a little bit about me and, and m and Bank, I joined m and exactly to the day a year ago. So today is my first anniversary, one year completed with the bank. The reason I came to MNT was because of the passion around purpose and, and the insanely purpose-driven organization and leadership and people that are there. And so all of our conversations leading up to, to, to my being with this amazing uh, group of individuals at MNT was all around how do we show up in our communities? How do we help our communities? Um, how do we help our colleagues and employees who live in these communities? And, and our customers, our members, our shareholders together to build better communities. We really think of ourselves as enablers of communities and, and we're building that bank to support them um, and, and how we show up and doing that in a very customer obsessed way and, and an outside in way is incredibly important to the future. And that's really my job is to think about how we can rally our 17,000 employees at the bank um, we operate in over nine states. We have over 700 branches, over 150 billion in assets. But when you look at those numbers, at the core of it, at the center of it, is a very purpose-driven organization. The teams have always prided themselves on care and concern, as many of your teams do. All of all of the participants here on this call now and listening to the to the recording, I'm sure, um, feel the same in terms of. We, we believe in customer experience. We believe it's the right thing to do. We believe it's the right thing to do and that will automatically generate the right value for the organization you're a part of. Um, most of the times it then transforms into, well, where do we start? Um, what is our culture like right now? And, and how do we embrace that belief and build on that and then take that forward? And that's really what I'm hoping to share for a little bit today. Hopefully some of this resonates with what you're already doing. Some of it is hopefully helpful as well as we go through the conversation here. Here's a little bit, I thought I'd share a little bit of some of the starters for us in, in 2020. I spent, I spent before m and I spent close to two decades um, at JP Morgan and a few other places. And what I learned along the way is we are filled with incredible people who show up to work um, all of us colleagues, we wake up in the morning wanna do, wanting to do an amazing job, feeling a sense of purpose for the most part, and wanting to help colleagues, fulfilling a purpose, be it within the scope of our work, at home, in the environments, in the communities that we all operate in, um, and in our day-to-day -day lives. And so I thought, what better place to start than a shared purpose? In any organization, the starting point of customer obsession, employee obsession, your, your organizational obsession to grow and build stakeholders and shareholders has to start with that shared purpose and a really deep purpose of, of what are we here to do? Who are we here to support? And, and in my case, it is our customers and communities and employees. Those are, those are my stakeholders. And as we thought about that shared purpose, we designed around how we talk about that shared purpose and build deep roots in the organization. And we did that through a series of 
boot camps around customer centricity, customer innovation, growing our customer bases in the lens of offering them the value propositions that customers need. But what does all that mean to employees in a bank or employees in your organization? And that's why having that shared purpose at the top of the house is really important to give clarity to your teams, to your employees, to your partners, your suppliers, your vendors, and all of the ecosystem, ecosystems that you and your teams work with. Then we looked at proof of concepts. When we think about proof of concepts, those were really what I would call belief builders. Out of shared purpose comes the need to build belief or foster and build on belief where you already have belief. And proof of concepts go a long way in, in really tipping the scales and turning on the, I see that, I feel that, I can link and resonate with that purpose of customer centricity and really, really um, rallying groups of people around that. And I'll, I'll share a couple of examples here of what we meant by that. Early wins was fantastic. The example that comes to mind when I think about early wins is, is PPP, which, which for, for everyone on listening here, is really about helping our customers and communities during these pandemic times, especially our business customers, obtain really quick funding from the government stimulus packages that are coming out. We did not approach it from the lens of there is a, a request to perform these actions from banks that the governments want us to do. Instead, it was very much around how do we help these distressed customers, business customers, small business customers in our communities where, where many of us go to, to restaurants to get a haircut for your children? Um, we, we go to buy that cup of coffee because it's such an amazing coffee brewery at the corner of uh, your, your neighborhood there that you want to go. We wanted to help those customers. And, and the way the teams rallied was customer-centric, journey-led, agile-built, um, and really thinking about how to deliver that. So we were able to deliver on some proof points, uh, now over 96% approval for those customers. We're currently in round two. We're the number three bank right behind BFA and JP Morgan. Um, so think about large bank and, and regional banks and the scale there that we were able to support. So we're really proud of being able to help customers, but with the foundation of customer centricity and not from the perspective of, of a task or, or a particular um, initiative to fulfill. Scale, scale is incredibly important and powerful. Um, it is easy to go after a quick win. It is easy to deliver on early wins. And when you think about the scale of any of your organizations, the combinations of products, services, departments, functions, titles, roles. Wow, that's a lot of stitching together that needs to be done. Scale is all about stitching together that organization and, and bringing in that outside in customer perspective to make it a front to back connected experience for employees. When employees in all parts of the organization can see and believe and rally around that shared purpose and know what each of the parts deliver to make the whole, it delivers amazing experiences. And, and then we stand on that pride and hopefully say, we are here to support those customers and communities. So that's a little bit of what we, what the approach and the starter package that we've, we've taken in and, and some, some quick wins and um, important ways to measure. KPIs are super important, right? Today we're talking about winning hearts and winning minds. And, and I'm gonna try to touch on both sides of that. Obtaining management buy-in into that shared purpose is incredibly important taking that, sharing that with the organization, building our, our shared purpose and outcomes that we want to arrive as an organization is important. Showing some proof points is important and that's how we're thinking about when, when I say winning hearts. But when we think about winning minds, I'm going into how do we, and, and, and you know, I get this, asked this question a lot, uh, regardless of the organization, I, I go to, how do you quantify CX? I'm sure you all get asked that. How do you quantify good contact center experiences? How do you quantify um, something that you know is the right thing to do um, and, and brings us to par? How do you quantify that? There, there are ways to do that. And, and when you think about shared goals and objectives, that's a way to start. Um, when you think about 
how um, efficient or how scalable the processes are in order to meet the needs of customers. Those are other ways to think about as well. So when we think about PPP, I shared a few examples. We have early readings in our CSAT and Net Promoter Score. We can tie that directly to customer growth. So really important for practitioners to think about marrying up both the hearts and minds in the conversation as you embark on large scale customer centricity transformations through any organization. A few, a few things that we're embarking on in, in 2021, we did arrive as a result of the work in the past 12 months, we arrived at a set of shared objectives around customer experience across the whole bank. That's pretty powerful in any organization. And, and I know many of you are embarking on that same as well, but that's really important, right? That, that you have that alignment. If you have people misaligned, not working for the same cause and purpose and mission, we're not all going to be marching towards that customer obsessed view that we are all trying to create. I will say this one thing that's not on the page, but I believe our next 20, 12 to 24 months, we are going to be, uh, and we are in an experience economy. So how do organizations thrive, survive, um, a race for relevance in that experience economy is something that we all should have in context. Think about having that in context as we go through. And, and then all of our environments, we as employees of many different organizations, we are all looking at a variety of different influences, be it social, be it our uh, systems and tools and technology that we all operate in, the data that's accessible to you, the uh, people, the leadership, um, the commitments that you might have made to support your businesses, all of those are, are around all, each and every one of us. But when we think about that in context of that customer lens, it, it changes the way you approach it. So I love, I love when we talk about how might we statements. I think it's a very powerful tool, as simple as it sounds. But every time we start with a mission of, a project or, or an item to fulfill, flipping that language around to a, how might we solve for this so the customer is happy, so the customer is having an incredible experience while fulfilling a particular objective within any of our organizations, just, just flips that dialogue on its head. And, and we find oftentimes when the customer is not at the table, those how might we statements, do we have an outside view, in view perspectives, those can really help flip um, the conversation and the dialogues that are happening. So a, a few different things to think about. The, the last thing I might mention um, is, is a little bit about our approach. You can see it's intentionally simple by design. We want to be able to, and, and this is something that I would share would, would, would probably apply in any organization and industry. If you think about listening as the first capability, the more we know, the more we can do. It's pretty simple, right? Do you know what your customers want, desire, prefer, do not prefer? Those nuances, that's really, really important to know and have that as a foundational pillar. Build and launch distinctive experiences. We want to be able to offer differentiation. And when I say we, I mean the global uh, global, global um, experience economy and people operating in it. That's, that's really one of our main objectives. Do we operate? Do we offer services? Do we talk to customers? Do we train our employees with that outside in perspective? And then lastly, how do we tell those stories? To continue to build a belief, to continue to align and show how we're fulfilling our purpose, and you go right back into listening. So it's a little bit of a repeatable blueprint, again, um, that any industry and company can certainly use and, and can find helpful in framing up a, a customer centricity program. So with that, I'll leave, leave everyone with this last view, a little bit of a, a, a view into any customer centricity uh, playbook typically has a few levers that are really key to working together, which is why the customer is right at the middle in there in terms of shared customer centricity um, aspirations and aspirations are incredibly important. It's easy, easy to say that we want to accomplish something this year, but having an aspirational view that's about three years out, I wouldn't, 
I don't know about going beyond three years at this point, given how the past year has gone, but three years out is a great place to think about. Do you have enterprise platforms and services? What do you, what does your organization need? Cultural and talent. Think about diversity and inclusion. Think about um, learning and, and development. All of that goes into that, that lever. Incentive and performance management. Are you set up in silos? Are you set up with shared goals and objectives? How flat or lean is your organization so that there's more empowerment in the teams to be customer centric and, and own the work? Data and technology. Do you know your customer? Does all of the bank or all of your organization know your customer needs, wants, desires, who they are and where they transact? Investment and impact measurement. Do you have a venture capital-like funding mechanism for customer-centric um, innovations and efforts? Or, or is it a more traditional financial planning effort? Innovation and value proposition has always been around everywhere, but how deep is it seeping into your, into your organization? So hopefully all of that helped. I, I, I felt I talked very fast, but hopefully what we shared here was a little helpful. So I will stop sharing the screen and turn it back to my friend, Brooke.